As cold weather sets in in Ukraine, Russia's airstrikes carry a new threat, wrecking houses and apartments and shutting down power just when people need warmth and shelter. An October day in Kharkiv, four days after a Russian missile exploded in this street, smashing the windows of almost every apartment on the block. Work to repair them began just a day afterwards. It's a tactic they call fast recovery, fixing up minor damages as soon as possible. This enables people to stay in their homes, keeping space and shelters free for those who need it the most. Most of all, we do fast recovery. Fast recovery, we change windows, uh, move uh, garbage and uh, made roofs. The woman who lives here is staying with her family for now. But the volunteers cleaning it up say she should be able to return within a few weeks. Uh, to move uh, the garbage and to close the windows, uh, it seems to me that today we can do it uh, for sure. Once the street outside is fixed, you might not be able to tell a Russian missile struck this block at all. But in the northern Kharkiv suburb of Saltivka, life looks much different. The neighborhood was pummeled by Russian artillery in the first few months of the war, and those who stayed are now facing their second winter without central heating or even windows. Anna, her mother, and a friend have been living in the basement of their apartment block for 20 months now. They moved their lives underground because it's warmer there. They can heat with this old wood stove. Anna plans to move back upstairs once the central heating is fixed, which the government has promised to do. But the work hasn't started. She's worried that the building could grow mold and start to deteriorate, and then she'll never be able to move back in. Anna's building is in fact low on the city's priority list because it's too badly damaged to repair quickly. Several of the buildings in the Saltivka neighborhood are in this predicament, and many of the residents are growing impatient with the city authorities as the second winter of the war sets in. This group of residents meets us outside a row of heavily damaged buildings. They're desperate for anyone to hear their grievances. Many of them are living doubled up with other families nearby. They don't want to move into shelters for displaced people, which might leave them far away from their jobs and their neighbors. The destruction here is staggering. The building suffered multiple direct hits from Russian artillery, and residents say even from missiles from warplanes. It's difficult to fathom the cost of rebuilding this, especially while the government is still focused on a full-scale war. Residents say they would even try to raise money and fix their apartments themselves, but the city won't allow that for fear that amateur repairs could be a safety hazard. In an adjacent suburb, the city is already wrapping up repairs. The buildings had little structural damage, and workers are putting in the last new windows. Some families are even moving back in. Kharkiv's deputy head of housing says he understands why the residents in heavily hit areas like Saltivka are frustrated.
Housing those whose homes were damaged or destroyed in the war is only one challenge facing Ukrainian authorities as the winter approaches. Last winter, Russia's military targeted Ukraine's power grid with drones and long-range missiles, causing frequent blackouts throughout the country. Everyone we spoke to expects the same thing this year. The same except for one thing. Ukraine has learned a lot about Russia's strategy and has been preparing for this cold season all year. For one, the Ukrainian military will now prioritize large electrical substations for air defense. The stations deliver electricity to up to half a million households in big cities like Kiev and proved vulnerable to Russian airstrikes. Engineers are also rebuilding smaller substations damaged in Russian attacks and housing them in blast-resistant concrete. Last year, Russia destroyed around 3,000 local substations just in the Kiev region. The new sheds can't withstand a direct hit from a missile, but they can absorb shrapnel from a nearby blast. Despite the lessons learned, Ukraine's energy infrastructure is going into this winter at a disadvantage. Russia has destroyed a vast amount of expensive equipment, and replacements are only arriving in Ukraine piece by piece. And it means that resilience in general, of course, on lower than before all these things started. Uh, that we are in between. From one side, we, we're well prepared. We have understanding what's happened. We have a lot of training and uh, preparation done. From other side, from equipment side, we are on weaker position. But Harchenko believes Russia no longer harbors the illusion that it can bring Ukraine's cities to their knees through attacks on infrastructure. Uh, I believe that it, it, it will be hard but we will survive. Back in downtown Kharkiv, the fast recovery team is making progress. Air raid sirens ring out, but workers pay little attention. Every time you guys fix a building, it seems Russia drops another bomb on Kharkiv. Do you feel like your task is endless? Our task is endless. Endless. We don't know for sure, but we're ready for uh, everything. Uh, life before 24 of February and after, it's different life. Now we do it uh, over and over, but uh, in future it will, uh, it will be ended. But we don't know when. Mm. But we are ready for everything. Mm.